everybody, welcome into Celtics Now. I am your host, Michaela Vernava, and you can put those panic buttons away if you haven't already. The Celtics now officially on a hot streak, going a perfect 4 0 coming out of the All Star break. And their win streak crescendoed into one for the record books Wednesday night against the Charlotte Hornets at TD Garden. Maybe it's because of pregame dance routines like this one. I don't really know what the secret is, can't say for sure. Um, those were some fun moves, but the C's hit a new season high, putting up 134 points, and their 54 of 87 shots from the field were good for the team's best shooting percentage in the Brad Stevens era, and since April 3rd, 2011 to be exact. Plus, Boston's bench outscored its opponents' reserves for the third time in the past four games, so it was truly a team effort. And as we all know, that was not the play we were seeing from these guys before the All-Star break. Here's their take on the turnaround. Um, it's our pace. Um, simplifying some things and, uh, you know, being able to uh, read and react on the fly um, and play with a um, high intense uh, effort for a uh, longer period of time. Um, whether it be us being tired or, you know, just heading to an all-star break, um, you know, kind of just going through the woes of the season, coming out of it. Um, I think that for the first few games, we've done a great job of responding, and um, we just want to keep it up. Our first practice out of break was hard, long, and, and real, and you could kind of tell that our guys had a good focus about it. We would be able to pick up offensively as, at least as well as we could, and then, um, you know, defensively, we still have to – do a better job. I thought tonight the first half was one very good. Time now to welcome in Darren Hartwell, our basketball analyst, and I also am going to bring this oh, wow. bad boy in. Well, here we go. The panic button. I know I said at the top of the show you could put it away, and I think you can, um, but what I want to know from you, Darren, is if this surge is for real or if it's just a post-break surge from the Celtics. Yeah, I think here's what I'm going to do with the panic button. I'm just going to move it slightly away, uh, farther away on the table, A, because uh, the light's very bright. It's in my eyes. Yeah, now it's just um, right in my periphery, my yeah. left eye there. But. but I think that's a good place for it. I think, uh, you know, you don't have to – we can't put it away just yet. We can't turn it off just because the Celtics have – they've won four straight games, but they've all been uh, against opponents under 500, some pretty, some pretty lousy competition. I think they're going to have a real test this coming week. They play the, the Rockets on Saturday, and then uh, next Thursday they play the, the Timberwolves, two Western Conference teams on the road, quality opponents. So uh, I don't think they're out of the woods yet. I mean, that said, they, they really made a statement out of the All-Star break. They took care of their business when they needed to. They got four straight wins, and they're back on track. But just, you know, have it around a little bit. Okay, so where, what I'm going to do here is I am going to turn it off just because one of us might pass out, I yeah. feel like, if we leave this on the whole show. And I'm just going to slide it over here. So we'll put it away, but, like, don't put it in the attic. Don't put it <laughs> some. Don't put it somewhere you can't get to it quickly. We might need it. Still TBD there. But for now, the, the flashing, screaming, siren. We're in light, the clear. Even though it's silent, it's doing <laughs> all of those things as a light. You can just set it aside. But one thing we discussed before the break, and Stevens even said that he might be assessing over the break, was whether or not he'd be making some changes with the rotation. What have you observed in these past four games? Yeah, there hasn't been uh, too much major changes. There was kind of one change out of necessity. Daniel Tice started against the Knicks just because Aaron Baines got hurt in the previous game against the Pistons. Other than that, I think the biggest, I guess the biggest change is Marcus Smart's obviously back in the lineup. Uh, one thing I have noticed, though, is is uh, Marcus Morris has been playing more minutes. I think, uh, you know, he's not been starting. Baines has been starting over him, but the last two games he's played over 30 minutes. So he's kind of been the, the workhorse in the front court, even though he's not starting. And then alongside him, you saw Wednesday night Greg Monroe getting some solid minutes, too. So between uh, Monroe and Morris and Smart, those guys are kind of being relied on uh, on that second unit. And, uh, and so far, it's, it's working. So I don't think Brad Stevens necessarily blew it up. He just did a little bit of tinkering to find, uh, find out what was working. Just a little tweak here and there. And Smart's absence was certainly felt in those few weeks that he was out. His importance to this team, Darren, what does he do? I mean, obviously, they're a better team with him out on the floor. But the way he's able to help the guys around him play to their full potential. 
Yeah, I think the one everyone talks about is the defense, and I do think that has shown up. They've been a better defensive team coming out of the break. You know, I think they uh, they held the Pistons to 98 points. Uh, they played good defense against the Hornets the other night. But also on the offensive end, he hasn't been too bad. There have been a couple games where he's gone four for five from the floor, very on Marcus Smart-like numbers. But even when he doesn't put up the offensive numbers, that energy is always there, and I think where that really helps them is in the second unit. I think we saw in, in this recent win streak where they're really putting teams away is when Kyrie Irving comes off the floor, the opponent's stars come off, come off the floor, and it's the second unit. And Marcus Smart keeps that energy level high. They just start to pull away, and whether that's from Smart scoring or just being on the floor and doing the little things, uh, it's, it's worked out. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at Smart's production in the four games he's been back, and he's also helped the team defensively as they've let up an average of 103.5 points per game in that span. Now, another key contributor coming off the bench, Greg Monroe, really proving his worth as a valuable depth piece Wednesday night with Daniel Theis out of the lineup with a hamstring injury and Aaron Baines playing through that elbow injury. Monroe, 6 of 9, shooting for 14 points. It's just been tough for me just getting rhythm on, you know, especially the situation this year, but it felt good to get some extended minutes and uh, actually get out there and get into the flow of the game and you know, just try to be as effective as possible. Now, Darren, I do just want to note that even though I mentioned Baines playing through that elbow injury, he did very well playing through that elbow, elbow yeah. injury Wednesday night, crucial in limiting Dwight Howard to just three rebounds. He is gritty as hell really good player um but overall what do you think of these the contributions the celtics have been getting from their bench players it's incredible yeah i mean just looking at the stats so against the hornets they had 61 bench points uh pretty remarkable and then the night before or monday night i should say against the grizzlies they had 50 bench points and it's kind of been a balanced bench effort too uh, you know terry rozier has been in double digits uh, each of those last two games they had four players in double digits on their bench uh, last uh, last night against the Hornets. So it has been a balanced effort. We talk about Smart uh, contributing to that, but also Terry Rozier. Uh, you know, Marcus Morris has been has been scoring. He's a guy that they look to for bench scoring, even though he's uh, he plays a lot more minutes than some of the starters. So I think that's definitely crucial when you have a guy like Kyrie Irving. The focus is all on him. He's kind of sh shouldering a lot of that load, but need to spread it out a little bit and those guys kind of take the pressure off maybe guys like Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown they don't feel like they have to score 20 points a night when the bench is doing that well well Kyrie Irving may be shouldering the load but check this out okay now this is one serious haircut honestly I don't even know how that's done how that's possible that is some serious talent um, Kyrie is one serious baller, so how can you blame the kid for wanting to have his face etched on the back of his head? Irving's been on an absolute tear. He finished Wednesday night with 34 points, including four of six from three-point land. In his last five games, Kyrie's averaging 28.2 points. He's scored at least 25 points in 18 of his last 30 outings. He's very locked in. You know, I thought he was really, he went into the break hurting a little bit for how we play it. And I think that that was a, share, a feeling shared by all of us um, on how our team performed in the last, you know, few days leading up to the break. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought that you know, he uh, hopefully had time to relax and kind of get away for a minute. Um, but clearly, when we came back on Wednesday, we were ready to go. Just playing with an aggressive mindset, um, you know, like I've been doing, but probably more of an emphasis on it from my end. And um, when I'm being aggressive, it just creates other opportunities for my teammates. Well, speaking of Kyrie being aggressive, here's an interesting tidbit from Adam Himmelsbach. He said he was transcribing an interview and in the background can hear a spirited debate between Kyrie and Shane Larkin about the pros and cons of Nivea and the Vino moisturizers. He says that's today's lotion update. So certainly an interesting conversation point yeah. there. And are you team Nivea or team Vino? Well, I have to admit, uh, this actually happened last night. I, I've been experiencing some dry skin on my hands. Winter, it's tough. It's a tough season it's for dry on, skin. Yeah. And uh, unbeknownst to Adam Himmelsbach's tweet, went out and got some Aveeno lotion. 
so I'm uh, I'm firmly Team Avino. So you I actually haven't really had too much experience with Nivea, but Avino was there. It looked, uh, you know, fragrance free. That's my thing, yeah. and uh, yeah. It's working pretty I, I, well. I have to say, I'm, I can't speak on the Nivea part, but Avino Clear Complexion Moisturizer, Face Moisturizer, mm. love it. I live and die by it, swear by it. Seriously, I have been using it since like middle school. Absolutely. Wow. Too real strong MVP votes though, gotta give a shout out to Mezzo Lift. That is the real key. Uh, I don't know if you tried a little bit of micro needling skincare technology. It is I'm awesome. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, still waiting on that, but. Maybe you can get, uh, give me a sample. All right, now on to something a little bit more intellectually invigorating. This is super cool. Jalen Brown is speaking at Harvard's Graduate School of Education Thursday to discuss education, race, and how athletes can use their public voices to advocate for change. I'm excited. Uh, I'm, to be honest, I'm overwhelmed. I'm in preparing mentally for it, so I'm looking forward to it. And I don't know what to necessarily expect in terms of what the crowd would be or you know, the expectations, but I got some interesting ideals and uh, I can't wait to share them. I mean, who wouldn't be intrigued by that? You know, Harvard only has a select few people to come, you know, give a lecture or come speak at Harvard. So I think the last person they had was like uh, Cornell West or Colin Powell or something like that. So um, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to speak in front of a crowd like that, a prestigious university such as Harvard. And uh, I take that with the most high and I can't wait to get out there and, and share some of my ideas. A really cool opportunity for Jalen to have speak at Harvard. And that just about does it for this episode of Celtics Now. As always, keep it on Nesson.com for all your NBA news. And before you go, since it's Thursday, I will leave you with this gem of a TBT, which went down 18 years ago today. You're the people being negative. You're in some of the fans. Larry Bird's not walking through that door, fans. Kevin McHale's not walking through that door, and Robert Parrish is not walking through that door. And if you expect them to walk through the door, they're going to be gray and old. And as soon as they realize that those three guys are not coming through that door, the better this town will be for all of us. And all this negativity that's in this town sucks. And I've been around, and, and, and when Jim Rice was booed, I've been around with your shrimp, booed, and it stinks. It makes the greatest town, greatest city in the world lousy.